What to do, YouTube? So today I am trying to replace this tired old uh, 2006 Mercedes S500 stereo. Um, clearly, it works perfectly fine. Um, it's just really old. So, of course, you can hear some music. Um, yes, everything works fine with it, but uh, I, I don't have the ability to have auxiliary or Bluetooth audio. Um, I could go out and purchase the uh, satellite radio, uh, I guess, but uh, which would be the factory ones you just pick from a red car to get some satellite radio, but yeah. It, it's just not it's just not worth the hassle um, trying to put in an outdated system so we are going to try to do something that I can't find any information on um, anywhere and that is replacing this head unit with a uh, aftermarket head unit not one of the Android ones that you know look great and fit fit and finish but like a Kenwood stereo system um, the other tricky thing is being able to get the steering wheel controls. So, um, thanks to the people of at Spiral Audio, they do make a amp bypass kit. No clue um, how this is really going to come out. The instructions are very vague, uh, so I'm going to walk you guys through it. So, I want to be the first person who actually provides some kind of documentation on how to do this correctly. So, first thing is, um, you want to cut the power off to start doing this, but I can't cut the power off because in order to get all this head unit out, I gotta take the climate controls out and I gotta take the cigarette lighter ashtray out. Um, in order to do that, I gotta move the shifter. So, turn this thing off. So first thing we wanna do, I guess, is put this thing in some kind of on position, foot on the brake, put it into drive. Oop, 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 oop. Let me put it back into, let me put it in reverse. Um, so, to take the stereo out, everything's with the T15. So we're gonna start with just taking these bottom ones out. Alright, so I just killed the battery um, since I had to leave the battery in because you have to we need to get the ashtrays to move the shifter. So um, the climate control, I'm just going to kind of leave this there, not too concerned about it being in the way. And um, next there's going to be some more the same type of screws. And there's actually two of these down here. Uh, again, I'm using T15. See, people say use T20. Um, but yeah, like, there's another one here, but my screw's missing. Um, to get access to the next part, and you don't need any special, like, tools. I know someone shares that you need to get special tools. Uh, when you look online, when you're buying kits, this one does not need any type of special tools. Um, use plastic pry bars, many different kinds. Take that out of the way. And again, more torques up here. does so what we can see is there is a large opening back there um, kind of not what I expected as far as how this thing is gonna hook up so basically uh, again this is 2006 I've heard that um, 
the 03s were different than the 04s and 04 through 06 should be the same um 2000 2002 are different um but uh this is all i have so i'm just going to take this out So now we move to the trunk area. I removed um, all, all the trunk lining. I took some pictures of it. You can find tons of stuff on it. Um, sorry for the poor lighting. When it comes to uh, getting access, uh, the next step is getting access to the amp. Um, because of our friends over at um, Spiral Audio, they actually provided um, a pretty cool wiring bypass kit so the bypass kit is really made up of a ton of different wires um this is where the uh ignition or sorry that the constant and the black we have a ground here that feeds off the amp or the hit so this is what's going to power our head unit and all the other colors here are going to be for the um tweeters I believe so those are going to hook up to the decks the decks um, power out while RCAs are going to be run all the way back here for subwoofer and it looks like the base so we'll figure it out together um, to get access to what we're trying to do I believe um, there's this big loom of wires here with this purple switch I did cut power to the car, so the car has been completely cut off. The battery is in the back, so it's pretty simple. Um, there's a little tab in the back here where I'm going to press on. Let's see if I can get a good look in here. Um, sorry for the bad thing here. So press in here, and this purple lever comes out. So I have not done this yet. I did not practice this. So, um, but yeah, it just came out pretty easily. And... I believe this should match up. So our provided kit should match up to this. And yes, it does. Um, so yeah, I just completely bypass everything. Um, also in the amp, I see my optical cables. Um, I see other things also in there. So I provided the kit here sorry again for the poor lighting but uh this is the bypass kit i just unplugged this portion here from the back of this was plugged in the amp and these are going to be my wires that run all the way to the front i do not see how this is going to be long enough but yeah we shall see All right, so um, welcome back. So I just did a rough, rough, least, I don't know how in the world to run these lines, but I literally just took the loom <laughs> wire um, from the trunk, um, running it back over to here. Uh, I got my power, which I'll show you later. I'm, hopefully it works, but I used one of those fuse taps to tap into the cigarette lighter for my ACC ignition. No clue this is going to work. It's going to blow up. Let's see if this thing does anything. We got power. Um, we're seeing this for this first time together. Um, I didn't hook up the volume controls yet. I didn't hook up backup camera. I hooked up, didn't hook up the sub, nothing. I just literally have um, the bare necessities. I think the audio that is hooked up is going to be just the tweeters since courtesy of the coronavirus everything is extremely hard to find and get and wait so I had to order uh, a, a five channel amp I got an infinity amp god I hope this thing doesn't blow up um, and I had to get all new RCAs this is an old head unit that I had it was in my old car 
Oh god, I got some horrible static going on here. This is not going to be good. Figure out how to fix that. So, um, so the stereo works. Um, what I thought was going back to my harness, and I'll show you guys a little bit later. Uh, on that spiral audio harness, there is the leads that come all the way up here, the traditional green, purple, white, and gray. Um, so the way I always explain is that the head unit's standard 25 watts RMS probably was going to power the tweeters. And then there is something that says front, left, right, all, you know, front and back, left, right, bass speakers or like subs. Um, so I use a toner and I hooked up my toner to see if there's any sound and the sound does not come out of the, uh, door panels, the, the mids. So actually this head unit right now is powering all the speakers except for the subwoofer, but it, I got to fix it. It sounds like absolute garbage and I'm getting s static. So, um, I'm actually just awaiting a, a five channel amp and with that five channel amp, um, now that I see how it's supposed to work. I am not going to run these lines, these, you know, giant lines that are basically just, you know, I, I, I of course I'm going to solder all these when the thing, everything's done, but just to test things out, I, running the wires up here, uh, is a pain in the butt. I even took the seat apart, but, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to not use, uh, these speaker lines from the head unit. I am going to use the RCAs from the back and run it to a five channel amp, which I hope works. Um, so what I'm going to do now, um, is I'm going to try to get the steering wheel buttons to work. And this is a kit from Metro audio that allegedly works. There's actually instructions on how to make it work for this unit. Uh, you do need to have, um, then you can program it manually, but if you have a PC, um, they had to have software that will work for it. So anyway, so the power wire where I get the, uh, switched power switched or ignition, whatever you want to call it. Um, I just simply use one of those tap things. So it goes into fuse 86. Um, that's a cigarette lighter because the cigarette lighter is on an accessory, um, 12 volt. And then I use the loom stuff again here. Um, looks like it's factory it actually matches what the factory uses. So got this things off Amazon. This is like the smallest one. They can't have a bunch of different sizes, but kind of ran out. So, so one of the next things we want to do is, as you can see, I already took the back seat out. Uh, it's actually very easy to do the bottom portion. Um, and the reason I'm taking the back seat out is after doing some investigations, there is no possible way, which is so weird that you can't go this is actually really nice sound editing there's no way that you can pass wires through this area um i tried so many times with like i wasted like a whole day probably half day or whatever uh trying to get uh lines through this because i got i have all this that uh is running from the trunk i have it just temporary working um but i guess you actually have to remove the back seats, and I started messing with it here. It looks like uh, these are 10 millimeters. Um, and it just comes from this area. So that's kind of hard to see with the lighting, but these things just seem to screw in here. So they actually just screw in here. So there's these latches here. So kind of give you an idea if you can see that so those just go to show that um this um i believe there's three of them so took this one out um and when you take it out uh it does lift um i got the got the other side taken out as well um so uh, uh, i think the last one is somewhere in the middle here I think it's uh, somewhere, somewhere back there. Um, I think there's another one, but yeah. So you got to take the back seats out to do this properly. Um, 
I can see why this is such a huge ta task for people to tackle. Um, another thing is, is I hope I have enough cable. Uh, I am going to be running um, a five channel amp. Let's go back over here. This is an absolute disaster. But I got this Infinity five channel amp. Um, should work great. But uh, yeah, of course, battery is disconnected back here. Um, okay, well, I almost got this out. So, um, removing the bolt there, uh, one in the middle, they're all 10 millimeters, and one on the exact other side. Um, this is what it looks like. I can lift it up pretty well. Um, I'm assuming I gotta take out the seat belt because that's what's keeping it from not working correctly. Uh, this is a T45. Um, if you don't have torque bits or even e-torque, um, step your game up because you guys are, I mean, if you're going to wrench, good stuff. I just took the... It seems like it, it it doesn't mind it. I just wrapped the seat belt to the front headrest. And uh, now what this allows me to do is, um, if you lift this all the way up, it actually does come undone. So and I just got to do it for the other side. So I guess you just lift up, it comes undone, and we'll look at the product, final product, the back. And what we can see here is this is what was uh, holding it in. So I took those three screws out. Um, then we had to take out the middle seat belt. I left it loose. I didn't disconnect. So this is the rear. So this isn't just a good idea. Uh, this video isn't just a good idea if you're trying to run audio because it's probably a stupid idea that I'm doing this. But um, also your rear SAM unit is on the rear um, passenger side. It's actually right under here. So this would be the same thing to get to that um, if you have issues. Or this car used to be, I guess, an Uber car, um, according to all the stickers I found on the windshield and stuff left. So there was also a ton of money in these back seats. These back seats were disgusting. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is the, this is why I couldn't get anything to fit. So no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get anything to go through, uh, cause this is completely sound dead. And so I got to take this all apart. So, uh, just a little initiative. So this was all tucked in. So you, I, I'm not messing with it. You can see how that one's all tucked in. So what I wouldn't do is just literally pull this out from under this thing that was covering it and just pull it back a little bit. I don't want to do too much damage. Um, something very unique. This thing is literally a solid trunk, like backing. There is no pass-through. Um, it's, it's unfortunate because I know there's people that uh, have issues with the rear trunk actuator. I had to fix mine another way. And some people are like, oh yeah, you just crawl through the back. Nope, you're not getting back here at all. This is pure steel. Um, so all the wires, you can see for everything from the trunk, it's routed through here. All these yellow lines, of course, are for the stupid door actuators, soft closed doors that are always breaking. I gotta fix those, a bunch of other wires. Um, so I found my access point. The negative side to this, this is a huge car. Um, the RCAs that I purchased are 17 feet. Usually in any other car or every other car project I've done, there's usually like four, five, six feet left over. This is going to be a stretch. Um, I don't even know if there's even enough, honestly, to go from the front over here and of course wrap it down and go around um, and then take it all the way through here. And then of course through the back. So you can see where those wires now go. All right, so 
um, this is the pro progress I've made. I actually got this whole system set up and working. Everything's in shambles. There's my five channel infinity amp. I got everything running to it. Um, so what I'm gonna show is um, two things. Um, one is how to get the steering wheel adapter to work. So the instructions are very vague. Um, I contacted uh, Metro online. They told me, oh yeah, you just need to find the brown and brown red wires somewhere. It's part of the canvas. It goes throughout the car. But the instructions that you print out actually have it saying it's it's in the rear, and it just says it's in the rear. So I strongly recommend you do it this way because it actually works. The way I had it before was complete chaos, caused me malfunctions on my instrument cluster and check engine lights. It was bad. So this is part of the canvas um, that plugs into this thing. So I removed the, the CD changer. Um, DVD thing. It's, I'm actually keeping all this intact. I'm gonna put it back to factory. So um, this is actually a gift from my brother. This car. So if he doesn't like what I've done, he can literally 20 minutes put this whole car back to stock. So these are. This is the line that tells you to. These are the two pins. There's a red, brown slash brown. I just use these. I think they're called T taps. And then I ran these wires all the way through the front of the car to the. Um, ASWC1, whatever. And this actually just needs to get plugged back in right here. Um, the other thing that we got to do here is, oh, we got good lighting here, but the uh, dreaded antenna lines. So you can see I actually have it unplugged. There's two lines. I have no idea if this is the right one. But, um, so Spyro Audio sells these kits and it says that this is the, um, that is the proper adapter that runs from there all the way to the front so you can get regular ass radio which I am not a friend of fan of radio radio I like satellite radio but this is for my brother so anyway, this is hopefully long enough so this is gonna plug in and run all the way to the front all right so here's uh, a poor version so there are two Oh, damn these things. So you can see that brown one right there. So there's actually two of these antenna things. Um, I was told to do the blo the bottom one. No idea this is correct. But there's actually a plug. Um, not that top tab, but on the bottom of it, it, it literally unplugs. And then I was like, okay, do I plug the old this new one into the old spot? And then realize that this adapter um, just plugs like that. So you can see the green. This is what... Um, I had before I showing you and that just plugs in the old one and then you can see I got tons of wire to run so um, Yeah, so I did that and then I have to plug this thing back in again. This is for the steering wheel control I do know this works tried it out haven't really done a whole lot with it But you can do and remember run any colors you want. I just chose red and brown to run back um, Because I had a lot of this wire. This is a 16 gauge wire you can probably use hmm, 18, 22, whatever those are right there. But yeah, I just use T-taps. Um, so yeah, and then this plugs back in. I think you need to keep it plugged in. I left it plugged in, got it working. And I'll show you guys later. But yeah, it just plugs back in, snaps in. Um, and I think I can put the rest of this back together. I'm just gonna verify it works with an antenna adapter. So, okay, so ran the wires from back there um, tore everything apart here so there's a big metal clip here you got to lift up really really hard hopefully I can get this back um, but this is all needs to come out ran the wires as you can see there put some duct tape down and actually ran it down through here and uh, through the center console so as you can see here the center console has been removed um, I don't know if that needs to be done, but that's what I did. Also, I had to lift the seats here. Um, I had to take the seats out so I can get the center console, run the wires. Um, so, even took all this out here. Huge mess. So now all my wires are up front, and now working on the dash kit that came from Spiral Audio. At the same time, I also installed a USB. So there is 
Here's the center console. A um, bunch of things broken. But one of the things I did, which is probably a bad idea, is actually installed a USB down here. Um, the reason why it's a bad idea, because if you ever pull too hard on this cable, it takes forever to get it out. So, and you can see there is my USB, so that's gonna run to my stereo. So this gives you an opportunity to hook up. If you don't use Bluetooth, you can use this um, to charge your phone and also connect. So um, that's it for now. All right, so one of the things I learned through this experience is uh, an easier way to run uh, the wires and everything up to the head unit. Um, I already showed you guys how, of course, taking the back seat out and um, running the lines, I gotta clean these all up. But um, one thing that I had to uh, earlier is I removed the front seat and then I took out the center console. And taking out the center console is not too bad. I mean, you gotta like remove this right here, disconnect. There's like some antenna lines or something over here behind, just right there. Uh, there's a Torx bit. Uh, there's two, one on each side. And then you're just gonna take off the uh, center console, the shifter. Literally just get everything all wrapped up in here. And it's literally just lifting up this. This just literally just lifts up. Um, should have probably record this but anyway and then this just literally just pops off and then this piece just pops off and under here there's just two screws so super easy to do highly recommend doing that so just remove these two screws remove these two sc the screws back here so you're gonna remove these two remove these two and don't touch anything else don't remove this because you can see i mess with everything um and all you're gonna do is just literally lift it up and then from here, to get your lines ran, you're gonna have a friend, because you're gonna have to move the seat back and forth. Um, but literally, I'm, you're gonna just pull back here, move the carpet back, and my lines are actually running through here. I didn't do what some other people have read, you know, removing this. I did remove this, try to feed it down here and around. Um, it is just way too tough. So, much easier. You're just going to feed the wires down, like has shown. Still got to clean it up. And of course, I got my looms that I'm running. I like things that look factory. Um, and then these are just running down. And it's just molded down. So you can see how I actually use some duct tape. It's hard to see though, but my lines are actually just running down this way. And it hangs it so like my wires are literally here, but you would never know because this is the normal contour of the carpet. So when you run it from here, you're actually this is gonna be lifted up, and of course this front seat would moved up. There's an area right here where you can grab the wires from. So it seems super super easy <laughs> logistically. It's not because this this carpet. I mean, look at this padding. It's so heavy. I mean, you can lift up on this thing, and again, you need a friend and probably some wire but yeah you can that's that's how you run it so do not need to remove the front seat do not need to remove the center console i, I would remove the center console because i added a usb adapter in there so i can that uh, but always had good luck with jail this is jail audios uh four channel um rcas and then of course these are the stinger two channels that i'm using for the sub i wanted a six channel all in one but they really don't make them um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's the do's and don't do's. Don't break things. All right, so finally got the interior done, wrapped up. Uh, what we're doing now is getting the amp. The amp's been working, just trying to clean it up. So, uh, just trying to document here. So there's my four gauge, the blue wires, the four gauge power for the amp. Run around those actually back here. This is a stinger kit. The back here is actually the kit there. Run through there. Running the blue line down through there. Don't know if it's a good idea or not, but that's the power. And then running up through there. This black line right here. This is all my RCAs. Everything from the front. Just trying to separate two. And then um, running down over here. So 
Got to figure out a way to put the amp over here. Haven't figured it out yet, but wanted to show that's how the design of everything's working. All right, so welcome back. Um, this is what the mount comes with or looks like when you uh, get the kit from Spiral Audio. Um, it's just a little bracket thing. So there's really no mystery behind it. So there's no instructions for one thing, but this, you know, you gotta line it up to a certain spot, meet the holes, and then it's literally just gonna sit flush to where those holes line up. There's those holes. Um, it kind of changes quite a bit with the whole installation. And then there's this face plate. So the old air conditioning control module um, is gonna screw in. I actually broke these things, these little tabs here that come have to be re-glued back down. But yeah, so this just goes back in. Uh, I gotta move the shifter, but um, I'll show you. But I tested it, it looks really good. Um, thing I don't like about it, so you guys ought to be innovated, innovative, is I had to put this tape up there like the double-sided tape because there's like nowhere to screw because the factory um, means the old command had the strip right here that you actually pop off and there were screws here and then like screws here so there is no the so um, and, and again this this comes off so you just lift up and it comes off so I got tons of wires everywhere I don't like this but I did put my satellite radio up there. I tried it in the rear um, back window. It, it just would not get signal. So I actually, um, instead of rerouting re it, it's just so much work, I just went and bought another antenna off Amazon. Um, this is also a stupid idea, but I did it anyway. Uh, what you're looking at is the antenna, the FM antenna. The factory one, I, there is that, uh, I showed you guys the uh, adapter that I got from Spiral Audio. It does work okay reusing the factory antenna, the shark fin up top. It, but I was getting like two, I don't know, like two channels with that. It gets a lot more. I, I still need to mount it somewhere, but as a glass antenna, that is a Metra audio amplified antenna. So it works really well, pulls all the HD channels. So anyway, I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. All right guys, so uh, I just got the head unit back in. I showed you what the frame looks like, so I'm just putting the torque screws back in. So there's one there, you know, there. It's kind of a weird thing, it reroutes, so it's, so you got those four there. Um, next thing you gotta do is, I gotta put this cover back on. So again, you're just gonna take the old, the, the old cover off the old air conditioning thing, and you're gonna put it here. So it's gonna look something like that. So to make this work, I gotta put in my handy dandy key should have my tripod on me but I don't so kind of just put the key in put on the brake of course um yeah so then I got to uh I think I'd go one more I don't know oops oh god it's bad news bears here so I'm going to shift this hope oh, there's no parking sensors shift this into neutral Put my parking brake on. Um, parking brake's on, so I don't have to worry about anything. Roll back, and uh, I'm just gonna kind of place this in here. It's kind of a stupid design. Um, again, the the only mounting points are gonna be right there, and that's where the ashtray comes in. So, and I'll kind of show you a cool thing with that too. So, just kind of, it just literally just sits in there it's kind of weird um my ipod disconnected but um yeah i tried this a little bit ago i actually i've, tr I've tried this um do know this you are likely going to get an srs light um that's okay don't stress out it's scary i know um the trick is is that by following these directions you actually have to code that out. Um, so that part's very scary. And I mean, code it out, you gotta have a star diagnostics tool, <sighs> trip to the dealership, whatever it may be, but that has to get coded out. Um, or else you're gonna have that fun light there. That's, 
it is what it is. I learned that. So I got to go get it coded out. So, so don't stress. Or I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. All right, welcome back. I am uh, officially finished with this build out customization of a um, stereo, aftermarket stereo and an S500. This is a 2006. I still should work for. 2004, 2006, maybe 2003, 2006, but yeah, not bad. Like this is the custom, you know, dash kit from um, Spiral Audio. I, again, not a big fan of how this thing doesn't like having attachments. It just attaches down here and here. Um, so that's a little odd. Um, I put the radio antenna up there. The factory one, I, I got to remount it somewhere else, but that's the radio antenna. Uh, I used the and um the kit for the antenna adapter it just did not work very well um and then i'm not a big fan of this but unfortunately i tried it many different places that is a satellite antenna so i am getting satellite antenna um volume controls so you can see both sides volume does work um i can change stations um, actually, you have to go into the audio. You're going to lose this audio feature here, so it's not going to show you what, what you're playing. But if you have the audio, then you can use the up and down channels. And, of course, you can change channels. So if you can see here, sorry, the glare. Uh, I am changing channels. And, again, volume. You can also reprogram these buttons. I couldn't figure out. Um, this is answer and hang up. But now when I do it, it just mutes it, which I don't like that. So, Yeah. So that's the the product there of the stereo. Um, it was a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work, 30 plus days just waiting for parts. This is my um, little USB. I showed this in other videos, but this is, uh, I added the USB so you can plug in a phone and charge it and also hook up music. Uh, this is pretty cool. So this is the normal um, ashtray. So when I open it up, things are always finicky. You can actually see I put in one of these um, USB chargers. It's a very very low profile one. This is by Anchor. I love anything that Anchor makes. So this is a very low profile. It's a smaller one. So it actually fits in. When you put it in there, it actually folds in there. So and I just threw a couple of um, cables in here for charging. Uh, this is a gift from my brother. He was very surprised. Um, so I'm actually getting rid of this car today. So I had this car for about six months, did a lot of fun work to it, a lot of repairs. So yeah, let me show you the trunk. So the trunk, show the trunk. So you can see how I did this. So this is the amplifier. Um, this is an infinity amplifier. Uh, there's actually, I have pictures. I'll have to show you guys the pictures. I didn't do a good job filming. but there's actually wood behind this amp. It's built out. Um, I kept all the factory, um, kept all the factory uh, CD player and navigation. It's actually behind this amp. Um, but if you can see kind of there, you can kind of get some idea of some wood. I had it built out, but you'll see the pictures. Um, I'm not a big fan of this wire mess. I still gotta do the camera. I just ran the camera line to the head unit. I still gotta attach it to put a backup camera in. Just my backup camera idea just did not work out so well. So uh, I ran this this loom. I love this stuff. I found it on Amazon. I got it everywhere. So this is a great amp. It is spaced out because this thing does get hot. This is a five channel uh, class D amplifier. It does wonders. Uh, some people put the amps behind here. Um, it just gets too hot. But yeah, this is what it is. I got a great deal on it. It's the Kappa K5. So another thing I want to go back to show um, you saw the SRS light in a previous video I did I did have to go see my friends at G&G &G Auto House here in Las Vegas so 
You will still get the SRS light, just pops it real quick, but it goes away before I was actually getting, uh, uh, instead of saying audio here, it actually say SRS failure, self restraint failure, something like that. It's pretty scary. Don't know what happens. But again, it's going back to that. This has to be coded out. For my case, I had to be coded out. So I had to take it, whoever has a start diagnosis tool, they had to code it out. And they charged me maybe an hour of labor, which is fair. Nothing I had to do, and they actually had to do it for me. I was not smart enough to know this, but they also disconnected the audio gateway. So I don't know what that means, but you will have to disconnect the audio gateway as well, or else you'll have a massive battery drain. So I was getting about a two, almost a two amp battery drain on this thing, with the, even with a brand new battery. So it would last maybe, I don't know, uh, 16, 18 hours before the battery would be completely dead. So disconnect the audio gateway. Also get the tele-aid, you have to tell them the tele-aid SOS. So you have to be specific what you wanna do or else they're gonna just charge you for hours of work. So this has to be coded out or else you're gonna have the SRS light. As you can see, my SRS light is not back again like my previous video. Um, you just gotta go get coded out. But it's been a lot of fun. Thank you guys. Hopefully I don't have to do this again.